Italy is home to more than 500 indigenous grape varieties. Some of these are extremely rare, consisting of only a few acres, and others, thought to have been extinct, have only recently been found in a small field somewhere off the beaten path. It is fun to discover these lesser known red wines from Italy. Join us as we share 10 Italian wines you may not have heard of, but you will want to try after watching. Give our video a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more. Alba Rosa. In 1938, Italian enologist Professor Giovanni Dalmasso believed he was using Nebbiolo to cross with Barbera and other grapes. But in fact, he crossed Barbera with Chateaus, a grape that's also known as Bornim that comes from France. While underappreciated for many years, in 2001, Albarossa was recognized as a quality grape of Piedmont and can be used in the Monferrato Rosso DOC. Albarossa tends to have violet and rose aromas like Nebbiolo, lots of red fruit character and dried spicy herbs from the Barbera, and it tends to have good acidity and soft texture. So we have today, what do we have here, Cindy? We have the right. Rico di Guazzi Albarossa Piemonte. This is a 2018, it's a $20 wine, and let's see if it lives up to the uh, to the hype of Albarossa. The hype, I know, I know. I want everyone to try this wine. It's a beautiful dark um, mm. red color. What are you getting on the nose there? Uh, hello to violets and roses, <laughs> just like you said. <laughs> Amazing. It's so, oh, it just smells beautiful. Yeah, really pretty wine. Like I, if I didn't know this, I would mm. think that I was maybe drinking a very, you know, um, inexpensive Longue Nebbiolo maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I get it, I get that red fruit. Absolutely. And you know, on the palate, I have a lot of dried herbs just around and it's a round mouth feel, very balanced. I'm loving this. Yeah, really nice acidity, kind of drying tannins that kind of flicker throughout the palate, but at the same right. time, that acidity and those herbs are just mm, yum. Absolutely, this is a keeper. And for $20, I'm loving the price points of these Italian wines. Yeah, Alboroso. Check it out. Grignolino, an indigenous grape from the Piemonte region in Northern Italy. Grignolino was historically an important grape, but as people wanted bigger wines, the light colored wine lost its appeal. Grignolino is a thin skinned grape and a low yielding variety. So it's hard to grow and to vinify and maturation is uneven on the stem but it's a grape that requires a lot of work. So anyone that's making it is passionate about this grape. Grignolino has two DOCs, one in Asti and one in Monferrato Casalese. It's a grape that produces a wine that has high acids, high tannins, and is not a dark black wine. No. So what we have right now, <laughs> no, it's not dark and black. It is the Franco Rero Grignolino 2020, $15. Another amazing deal. So I let's am, try this. I've never had it. So I'm really excited. Oh my God. I'm obsessed with green Yolino. I think it is one of the most, mm -hmm. I have like a little love affair with this grape because it is light in color and it's not that it's light body just because it's light in color, but it's just such a pretty wine. When you stick your nose in it, I mean, never it's, underestimate light colored wines. Yes. And it's just so fresh and aromatic with earthy a little bit more earth and herbs um a lot of kind of the red fruit but it's not that it's fruit forward i think what you were mm -hmm. saying the earthiness balances it out so you get these red fruit notes but tempered with that kind of earthiness this is yet another wine that when you look at it you think oh it's really light and eat you know soft no this has body it's this one is balanced it has plenty of flavor Mm -hmm. um tonight we're having a vegan dinner so i think i'm just gonna pour this what do you I think? think that sounds great it's the kind of wine grignolino with pizza grignolino with some charcuterie and cheese mm -hmm. grignolino um by itself although you know it's yeah. got that body and texture to go with food so sure but, absolutely but, absolutely um, yeah i love grignolino <laughs> Bruque is a red Italian wine grape variety from the Piedmont region. 
It's largely used in making Ruque de Casignolo, Monferrato, which became a DOC in 1987 and a DOCG in 2010. There are only 100 acres planted in Monferrato, so production is very small. But if you can get your hands on this, it produces a medium bodied wine with notes of wild berry and floral aromas and pepper with moderate acidity and soft tannins. So today I have the Vincio Valio Serra Ruque di Castagnolo Monferrato. This is a 2017 and it is a $15 bottle of wine, another incredible price for wine. You get, um, you know, a, a lighter, it's not as deep as the Alboroso, but it's got a nice red color, little brown on the sides, browning. <laughs> oh, it really is. Tons of wild berries, kind of like blackberry, a little touch of like a wild blueberry. Um, I get wild raspberries. And then those floral notes as well. Mm. It's got a nice kind of juiciness on the palate, but that juiciness is not overwhelming like in some big way because of this kind of nice acidity that rushes through the palate and soft tannins. I would seek out only hundred acres planted, seek out Ruque. If you can find it, it's worth it. Schiava. It's a red wine grape variety primarily grown in the Trento Alto Adige Sutero region in Northern Italy. Schiava combines a bright juicy acidity with low tannins and relatively low alcohol. It tends to have fruity uh, flavors of red berries like ripe raspberries, strawberries, rose, and a smoky sweet almond flavor. Some people liken it to Amaretto. And it tends to share a lot of characteristics with Pinot Noir, but some people say a cotton candy flavor. Let's see, I'm not sure if I'm gonna agree with that. Hmm. We have here the Eloise Legator 2020 Schiava Alto Adige DOC. This is an $18 wine, a beautiful light, light colored wine with super smoky, flavors that the nose is like smoky almond sweet almond I mean I got that absolutely spot on. spot on I get the red berries mm. just really pretty it's inviting I keep going back I get a little bit more each time I stick my nose in it's got a really light bodied nose to it I can see why people kind of liken this to Pinot Noir mm -hmm. um this is a beautiful wine it really is yeah it's got you know the fruit is more on the nose than it is on the palate on the palate i get sort of a, a light plus body or texture mm -hmm. it lingers on the on the palate kind of on the roof of my mouth as it sits there but really beautiful i see the pinot noir care, uh, similarity i do not see the cotton candy reference that mm -hmm. this gets a lot schiava is just so exquisitely yeah. beautiful Again, light colored wine, never underestimated. No. Rafasco dal Penduculo Rosso is a red grape grown predominantly in the Friuli Venezia Giulia region of Northeast Italy. The grape is a variety in the Rafosco family and derives its name from its red stems. Now, the Rafosco dal Penduculo Rosso is a late ripening grape and is known for producing wines with full body and high levels of acidity with a slightly herbaceous nose and tannins. And for that reason, it's often blended with Cabernet Sauvignon. So Allison and I have the Marco Fallujah 2015 Roronco de Moreri, Rifosco de Peduncolo, Rosso Venezia Giulia. You can say that, you win a free bottle. Good job, Cindy. And <laughs> I love this wine. Um, I was in the region a couple of years ago and I've been to the estate. But this wine too is just so indicative of the region. It's a lot of upfront appeal, very I'm, expressive. I'm getting a lot of like um, kind of sage and mint. Yeah, yeah, a lot of those herbs, wild berries, mint for sure. Kind of spicy, the textures, let's see. Silky, polished black fruits, those blackberries. Um, and minerality and just 
fine tannins. This is a beautiful wine. $21. Can you believe it? Wow. I mean, what, what's interesting is that it's not a full-bodied big wine on the palate. It's a really nice kind of medium, you know, it kind of goes in there. There's a, there's a nice mid-weight on your palate. The tannins kind of linger for a while. You know, the thing is, this could easily age. But for $21, why don't you buy three? One to drink, one to age, and one to share with friends. What do you think? Right. Well, they also did a good job for us because this is a 2015, so they aged it for us. For us, that's right. Yeah, so Maybe that we, we were the friends. Maybe <laughs> we were the friends. <laughs> so, you know, I, I agree. And I think it's just got such, you know, I like that this is 100% uh, Rafosco del Pen, Penduncolo, um, which is really fun to say. Um, it and it's just as fun to drink. Mm. I think it's more fun to drink than say for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just love with these indigenous varieties, this lighter bodied red wine. Red wine doesn't have to be hit you over the head, big, no. candy, juicy, you know, kind of no. unctuous wines. They can just have this really prettiness to them. And I love the, the herbalness with the floral and the berries on this. Yeah, I just love learning about, you know, grape varieties that are not in my wheelhouse. And this is definitely one of them. So, wow. yeah. Well, Pugnitello. <laughs> Pugnitello is an ancient and rare red grape variety native to Tuscany. We always think Sangiovese, but they do have some other indigenous grapes. <laughs> Pugnitello means little fist in Italian and re refers to the vine's small tight bunches of berries, which resemble a fist. So Punitello produces a, a thick skin grape in very small bunches. So you get a really intensely colored wine with plump tannins and good acidity. And we have the San Felice 2018 Punitello Toscana IGT. This is a, a little pricier. This is a $50 bottle of wine and uh, got some nice dark color there really intense. Um, it's got a lot of those kind of floral and fruit aromas. Let's just go straight into that. That's what straight I'm getting. In. Yeah. Intensely colored tannins. I mean, just really good, solid tannins. What do you yeah. think? I get a little bit of that, a smokiness that goes more into the palate coming from the nose that I feel yeah. a little bit warm. This kind of earthiness. Yeah, for sure. Very, Definitely the earthy. Yeah. Like there's an intensity to this wine but it's not heavy. It really grabs you in the mid palate and lingers. Nice kind of mouthwatering acidity at the end. Mm -hmm. I think this is, you know. You know, this is one of those wines to take to dinner and share with people that don't know about this variety and just open their eyes and, right. and have a beautiful Italian dinner or whatever um, and just enjoy. Yeah, I mean, if you love your Sangiovese, your Tuscan wine, surprise mm -hmm. your friends with this other Tuscan gem, this yes. Pugnitello. You yes, know, be exactly. Very yeah. Galliopo is a Southern Italian grape variety grown in Calabria. Galliopo vines are grown at high altitudes to protect them against the hot Southern Italian climate. They're often picked early to help retain good levels of acidity and to prevent the fruit from tasting too jammy and stewed. Galliopo needs a lot of care because it can easily oxidize and lose its structure if it's allowed to overheat. But when it's done well, you get notes of raspberry and red currant, leather, tobacco, clay pots, medium bodied with medium acidity and medium plus tannins. So let's see. This is the Stati 2020 Galliopo Calabria, a $14 wine. I just love saying Galliopo. Galliopo. It's, just, it's such a fun name. And I, you know, the first thing I get is I get raspberry and red currants right. Oh yeah. There. Those red fruits are right there on the nose. Intense. I get I'm a like, little touch of sweet tobacco, not too sweet, but just a touch of it. Yeah. And a little bit of mint. A little, a little bit. bit. Oh, the acidity is so bright and vibrant. I love this. Super. It's got this nice juiciness, not a jamminess, yep. but a juiciness on the finish that really sits on the palate. And I mean, I'm still tasting it. I mean, a $14 wine that I am still tasting as I talk. 
I know. Still tasting, still tasting. And what's really fun about Galeopo, and you think about this, this is Calabria, it's hot in the summer, we're down in the south of Italy. You can put a chill on this wine exactly. and you can enjoy it in the summer with a little chill on it. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I love red wines with a touch of a chill anyway, especially in the summer. So this is, this is waiting for that to happen too. Just a little bit, 10 minutes in the fridge. A chill. Mm -hmm. I'll be drinking this year round. Yep. Little cheese, little chill. <laughs> Susu Maniello. There are only 125 acres of Susu Maniello in all of Italy. This is a little known ancient grape from Puglia, that ranks among the world's most rare wines. The name means little donkey and it's a wine that packs a punch. A classic red Susumiello wine has a deep ruby hue and aromas of red berries and plums. Richer and more concentrated examples show spicy, peppery aromas and flavors of even dark chocolate. So I have the Masseria Li Veli, 2019 Asco Susuman Yellow Salento IGT, $21 for a rare grape variety that should, should be something we should know. So let's taste it and smell it. I, what you're saying, those uh, mm. chocolate notes, mm. definitely one of the first things I get. Mm. Oh my gosh. Even some dark chocolate covered cherries, mm. you know, some dark cherries. I mean, this is amazing. Um, and I know we say that about so many wines, but this truly <laughs> is dark and powerful and intense, but it doesn't feel intense. It doesn't have that tannic structure that's, you know, boom, high alcohol. And it just has those, that vibrant acidity that's so food friendly. And that's the neat thing about Italy. Wine is meant to be paired with food. And that's their whole mantra. That's how they've lived. And these are all amazing food wines. This is incredible. This really is a fine. Mm. Nerello Mascalese. Nerello Mascalese is a dark skinned grape variety that grows most commonly on the volcanic slopes of Mount Etna in Sicily. It gives aromas of taut, fresh red berries, herbaceous flavors, excellent minerality, and an earthy nuance. Norello Muscalese wines often have a perfume reminiscent of those of the noble wines of Barolo or Burgundy, so Nebbiolo or Pinot Noir. Let's see here. We have the Tenuta San Gia uh, Giame M19 Norello Muscalese from Sicily. And let's just see if we're uh, getting let's see. some of those. Yeah, I, I can kind of see where people would liken that to that it's got this lovely perfumed nose of, you know, um, floral. I get a little rose petal. I get a little violet. I get a lot of the red fruit notes, kind of um, red cherry. Yeah, you, you pretty much nailed it. And the violets kind of jump out with me. Totally jumping out. Mm. Oh my gosh. The palette is, is fresh. Fruit yeah. forward, minerality. Oh my gosh. And the herbs just kind of like shroud all of this. Yeah, it's like this so kind of dried herbs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's cool because you think volcanic soils of the of um Etna, almost like you can try it. And again, I think often we assume Southern Italy, big hot weather, so big dark wines. And no matter what you think, this wine has so much freshness, so much alive, it's so alive and, and vibrant, and it's just beautiful. Cananau. Cananau is the local name for Grenache, and it's the grape in Cananau de Sardinia, a DOC from the Italian island of Sardinia. Some recent Italian researchers have uncovered evidence suggesting that Cananau uh, may actually have originated in Sardinia. It's characterized by medium alcohol levels, soft acidity, generous red fruit flavors like raspberry and strawberry, and subtle floral and white pepper spice notes, typically dry and high in tannins. And one thing you should know that in Sardinia, there is this pocket, it's called a blue zone, where people live to be over 100 years old, and they might live to be over 100 years old because of this wine. 
So drink a lot of Cannonell. And we're drinking the Antonella Cannonell, Antonella Corda 2019 Cannonell di Sardinia, DOC, $23 wine. I can drink a lot of $23 wine if it means I'm going to live to be 100 years old. Yeah, I'm on that runway to 100 right now. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep drinking this Cannonell. Oh, Delicious. It's pretty aromatic wine. I get raspberry and strawberry. Mm. I really do get everything that this grape is set out to be. I get the white yeah. pepper. I get floral. I get. Me too. Me too. This is beautiful. No wonder you can live to a hundred because <laughs> it's just so good. You don't want to stop drinking it. So you just kind of like, I'm going to live a little bit longer so I can. Yeah. I like this kind of it's interesting on the palate, you're met with this bright freshness and then the tannins kind of fight against that, not in a strong way, but in this real nice play mm -hmm. of the two yeah. of them. You get not drying tannins, some of these nice kind of sandy tannins, but they really kind of say to the fruit, like, let's temper you down. So you get fresh and I don't know, it's a fun play in the mouth. Yes, yeah. it's, it's delicious. Absolutely. So with over 500 grape varieties in Italy, and we're just scratching the surface, <laughs> but we love exploring the lesser known wine grapes of Italy and hope you'll seek them out as well. So give our video a like, let us know if you have a favorite red wine from Italy, and even better if it's one of these unique varieties, not the common ones, and subscribe to our channel for more. Cheers. Cheers.